Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is September, wait a minute, yes, September 7th of 2019. This is, uh, I don't have any list or anything, but I know this is this has set me off, and that's why I decided to fire this up. So I'll try to put something else in here. But this is a blog, and I'm going to talk about this, um, and then perhaps I can pull something up here that have, that we should be interested in. Oh, this is so tragic. Our government. You know, the, the presidency has been spoiled and defiled. and But it's, it's not just that. It's not all of that stuff. It's, it's this kind of stuff that's going on. I happen to uh, know some... Uh, people who worked for the, uh, I'm not sure, well, they worked, for, they were weathermen. I'm not sure exactly where they fit it, you know. But uh, the reason is one, well, this one happened to be a uh, friend of mine. He's retired. And then I knew some others because I'm a amateur radio operator. Well, well, I was in the Ground Observer Corps when I was in high school. That was a auxiliary of United States Air Force that we watched. We were civilians and we watched for enemy aircraft. And, uh, my post was in Kansas City, Missouri. Well, that's where I lived. You know, your post was actually going to be where you lived. But uh, so when the Air Force, of course, finally, when they got to the point where they had the radar and everything that they needed, they didn't need us any longer. And I was also in civil defense at the same time, Kansas City, Missouri, civil defense. And so they, uh, not the Air Force, but the civil defense or whatever, and the Ground Observer Corps organization uh, switched us over as to, you know, weather observers. And we were trained as weather observers then. And so, I mean, uh, I met, you know, we would have training and that type of stuff, so. Uh, you know, we like to, I think Americans, maybe all around the world, you, I think you'd like to put down your government employees for some reason. Yeah, it may just be like, you know, police officers give you tickets or whatever, and you don't like that, so. And it. And you go to, you know, you have to have your car licensed and inspected and and you, then you go to the, you know, Department of Motor Vehicles and you have to stand in line to get a license plate and then you have to get a sticker for your windshield and all that. So it may be that, but uh, the people, the Weather Bureau, oh my God, I mean, they're, they're scientists, they're trained and... You know, they're not political in their forecasting. I mean, they're, they're forecast. They may be in another location, you know, but they're, for, you know, it could be also they're forecasting for their families, their friends, their children. All they're interested in is, or for, you know, they do. Like I knew a uh, guy who worked for the Weather Bureau. He's retired now, but he, I think he worked in different, a little bit different areas, but he did forecasting for, you know, aircrafts and uh, what their weather was and that type of stuff. These are all great em people. They're government employees, although Republican administrations would like to, uh, and I think they've had a little bit of success, want to turn it over to corporations and let the corporations do it. 
uh, because they want get you know less they want fewer government employees and they want to uh, send money to corporations you know uh, but you know we have this Trump fiasco he misspoke and he Alabama was one of the I think number one state or whatever that you know, kind of came, or the politicians came out for him. I mean, he's, well, he doesn't have a warm spot in his heart for anybody. I'm not even sure he does for his own family. You know, people think maybe that he does, but I, I just don't, I think he's just self-centered and it's all about him. And he made a mistake, he misspoke, but he can't admit that he makes mistakes. And then he goes to this extreme of, you know, using his, <laughs> taking the weather map or showing where and adding on to it with a sharpie pen or whatever and then he just keeps doing it and now we have a and I don't know exactly the hierarchy of these different you know I'm a I have I'm an amateur radio operator and this year I didn't get certified I didn't get certified as uh, Skywarn for watching you know but, uh, I mean, weather. And uh, so you have, you know, Trump who makes lies. First he makes a mistake, which I'm willing to give him the benefit of, that, he, you know, he's a busy person and he doesn't, he's not good at, you know, paying attention and comprehending and understanding and all that type of stuff. So, and he has Alabama on his mind because the election is coming up. And so he put a warning out to people in Alabama and, and they weren't under any kind of threat. I don't think they, they weren't even under any kind of storm warning. And then he can't admit that he, and then he continues it. Not, it's not just the next day or whatever, but it's, it's still going on. He just cannot, will not admit. And then, undoubtedly, he ordered, you know, the Weather Bureau put out the information that, no, Alabama was, you know, not is not under a threat. Alabama is not under a threat. Because you have people that the President of the United States says, you know, the hurricane is, what are they going to, some people are going to abandon their homes, some, you know, whatever. And uh, so now, Noah national or or oceanic uh i don't even know what it is doesn't matter anyway trump undoubtedly you know because he's telling his people you know what can i do to you know and they or i don't think any of them would volunteer uh well you know the organization that's over this you know thing here in the pie chart or organizational chart you know you could i don't think they would do it i think but i think he might Okay, who's over, you know, and then orders them to say, uh, no, uh, that, uh, that there was, uh, uh, you know, and whatever. So disavowing their employees down here someplace, management, you know, who was, you know, appointed by Trump. And this is so dangerous when you have, departments of the government, you know, yes, the president of the United States, you know, appoints, you know, department heads or whatever and ambassadors and various things. That's the way the system works to be, you know, the head of. So, and you can understand that in a way, except this, now we're, you know, I'm looking at, you know, maybe we need to change to a parliamentary form of government or something because this is not good. Because this is not the first. Uh, there was just stories of a few weeks ago that, and I forget which department it was. I think it was the Department of State, but I might be mistaken. It came out that the Trump appointees, you know, like Secretary of State or whatever, you know, and, and some people, of course, you're allowed to have, he's allowed to have some political appointees under to make sure that 
because you wouldn't want to have a president elected, and then you have uh, the head of these various departments would uh, say, eh, we're not going to put in, you know, the policies that the president has come up with and that Congress has approved uh, for spending and all that type of stuff. Eh, we don't believe in it, so we're just not going to do anything about it. I mean, he'd, he'd be kind of sitting there and it'd be a mess, you know whoever the president was. So the president is like, and I don't know how far it goes, you know, like he can appoint a secretary of education or secretary of labor or whatever, and then he's allowed to appoint a few more political, you know. Unfortunately, Trump has appointed people who are totally not qualified. I mean, totally not qualified. So what I think it was as a Department of State, let's say it was, and it came out that the director of the department and other political appointees at the top were going, you know, these employees are their career, you know, employees. I mean, they went to work for that department. They work there. They, they're working up through, you know, seniority and that type of stuff. They know their jobs. They do their jobs. They do the job whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, that's their job. They do this, you know, the bureaucracy, <laughs> papers and stuff and sign and that type of stuff. But Trump's political appointees were going around and, you know, in meetings and things like that and calling various employees, you are a traitor. You are a traitor. You're not supporting the, you know, you're not supporting the president. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. That's, I think it might have been the Department of Justice. I can't remember. Doesn't matter. The idea is this is a bad. Looks like this is going to be entirely political. Uh, this is a bad situation. Uh, I mean, Trump is chipping away at the very foundation of our you know, our government. He lies every day. Now, you can't believe. I mean, we've had some, over time, I'm sure, some bad presidents. We've had some great ones. But we've never had a, a president where he, I mean, you know, Nixon lied, uh, he, that he had nothing to do with Watergate. But Nixon didn't lie about everything every day. Uh, you know, the the um, Bush administration lied about, you know, whether they uh, were mass weapons of mass, de you know, destruction, and about whether, you know, whether the oil from Iraq was going to pay for the war. And, you know, they lie about something, but <laughs> they didn't lie. They don't lie every day. There's, we have a president who we can't believe one word that he says about anything. You can't believe it, you know, about uh, the weather forecast. Oh, my God. What I didn't know, what's kind of strange, but I can understand it. But I had no idea. You know, we have a lot of laws, too many laws, but uh, falsifying a weather report from the National Weather Service and their other, you know, NOAA or whatever, falsifying that is actually a crime and you can serve, I think it's, six months in prison and if you know now we're not going to you know because well because he's the president and because i think he's mentally unstable and i don't think he can help himself of course that doesn't stop somebody from being you know guilty of crimes but uh, so 
I don't know if I should have explained this or not. I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of people outside the United States. Of course, in the UK right now, they got other things on their mind. But uh, so uh, I'm using Manicam for this right now, and I have uh, several programs to. Uh, I have the debut video capture software that I just paid for. I also own uh, Movidia Video Suite that does screen capture and what have you. Um, President Trump is still defending his magic marker meteorology, tweeting, the fake news media was fixated on the fact that I properly said at the beginnings of Hurricane Dorian that in addition to Florida and other states, Alabama may also be grazed or hit. They went crazy, hoping against hope that I made a mistake, which I didn't. Despite a week's worth of fact check showing that's not true, the Trump campaign is cashing in selling these Trump campaign markers for $15, a big markup from what they cost in stores. Former White House Communications Director Anthony Scarabucci once again claimed there's something wrong with the president. I think the president is in severe mental decline. Uh, and I'm not saying that now because I'm a political adversary or I, 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 I disavowed him. I'm saying that objectively, just looking at what's going on. But the White House may have bigger problems on its hands. After the latest unemployment numbers found 130,000 jobs were added in August, below expectations, given that 25,000 of... 25,000 temporary workers for the census, which is just gearing up. I'm sure I mentioned to you before, I worked for the 2000 census in Missouri. I was a census worker first we went out and made sure that all the addresses and the maps were correct. This is in 2000. And uh, then I worked for the next step where we went out. And back then we did the short form and there was a long form. About, I think every six person had to do, you know, had to do a long form. But I was a... Uh, I worked the Cass County, Missouri area, which is sort of a redneck, uh, conservative area. Good people, but uh, I only had one person who went crazy when I went to the door. You know, ordered me off the property, don't I? How, how dare I come to his door and that type of stuff. And I only had one person. Everybody, now there were a few other people said, well, I don't know if I want to give the government, and I just explained, you know, hey, these questions, you know, have uh, Congress had hearings, and they asked the uh, census people, why are you asking this question, all that kind of stuff. I said, if you have a problem with one of the questions, let's just do it, and if you have a problem, I'll try to explain to you why that question's important, and... If you don't agree with me, then, you know, just don't answer the question. And everybody that, you know, everybody uh, did the scent. And uh, there were so many households that I went to that had adopted children, had, you know, taken in children that were, had some type of problem, had adopted children of other races, nationalities. I just felt absolutely great about the United States of America. And then I, I didn't do the census, uh, the next census, uh, the 2010 census, and because uh, I didn't have a car, I think, at that point. And, uh, excuse me, I was also in Florida. And I think that would have been okay. Now I feel sorry for these poor census workers that are going to go out because they're going to, I think, are going to, they're going to run into a lot, and even though they've done away with the, <laughs> the long form. So it's a short form. And it's not very much information, you know. But I feel sorry, you know, I feel sorry for, uh, I don't think they're going to see the same thing in 2000. 
uh, in the area that I did, everybody was wonderful. Uh, now I think it's going to be different with the census. Anyway, I was, I just, I had to get this off my, the president is tearing away at different government agencies. And not just that, he's usurping the power of, you know, we have three, in the United States, we have three branches of government. We have the executive branch, the president of the United States is the head of that. We have the, you know, judicial, that's just, you know, the court system, Supreme Court and what have you. Then we have the legislative, which the founding fathers actually intended to be the most powerful. That's why they gave it the uh, ability, you know, that Congress has to declare war. Uh, Congress decides how much money is spent and where it goes. And the executive branches, because of this way things are in the world and things changing, has taken more and more of the legislative, you know, powers. Now, Trump comes in and just fuck the Congress, you know. I'm going to do what I want to do, and uh, he does. And unfortunately, the Republicans in Congress, if they just stood up to him, uh, that would be... It, it would, you know, fix things. Um, if the president was just, in, you know, hey... You cannot do this. You cannot take money that's been allocated here by Congress because that's what Congress does, and you can't move it someplace else. And Congress has the ability and the uh, requirement to hold hearings and investigations to make sure that the executive branch is doing what it's supposed to do and not breaking laws or whatever. And therefore, you know, so Congress uh, subpoenas or orders somebody to appear before it. And the Trump administration just says, oh, fuck you, we're not going to. And, but it's sad to see a excellent service like the weather service that politics is, you know, entered into it. And it's not the politics from the workers. They just do their jobs. Um, you know, the Weather Department people just do their job. They're, they're scientists, technicians. I'm not sure exactly what you want to call them. Um, they just do their job. I've seen stories about, and I don't, I didn't, I didn't know, I, I'm not going to tell you the story because <laughs> I can't remember enough of it. But, uh, and I don't think I knew the guy who did it, but I know a guy who worked with, the, I know a guy who's retired from the Weather Bureau who worked with the guy. And, you know, he he put out a remarkable tornado warning one, t uh, one time. It's an interesting story. I, if I can find a link to it, uh, I'll try to find the link. I won't be able to get the link in there today, but I'll, if I can find the link to the story about it, I'll put that. But the, this weatherman, you know, and like he wasn't in, I think it might have been in Oklahoma or whatever, but uh, you know, he wasn't in Washington, D.C., or he wasn't in the, you know, whatever he was, I believe, in, uh, and he looked at the conditions, and like I said, they're scientists. Uh, you know, he looked at these conditions, and he just, you know, he put out the forecast, and he put it out. I've got to find a link to that. He put that thing out, you know, tornado coming, take shelter, I forget how he put it. Like I said, I'll fi try to find the link to it. And he undoubtedly saved lives. 
and uh, remar- he put out a remarkable thing. He didn't just say, you know, like tornado warning, you know. Uh, he And, you know, he sort of putting his job on it. You know, the way he did it was like, you know, sort of, uh, you know, all he cared about was getting the information out to the people. And uh, so, anyway, I don't know what we can do. We've got, I'm not sure how much more we're going to have of Trump, but this is bad. I mean, things like this, when you you're ordering people in a position to prostitute themselves and go against science and go against departmental policy to go against history and uh, ethics and everything else. And this is bad. It's bad enough we've got him, but he's degrading everything. His... So... You know, what's going to happen tomorrow? And the next time that, you know, a weather warning is put out, or, or you know, just the next time that, uh, a weather thing is put out, are there going to be Trump supporters, you know, in an area that is dangerous for floodings, hurricanes, tornadoes, or whatever, are, you know, now are these people, <clears throat> all these Republican supporters, Trump supporters, are they going to say, ah, this is fake news, I don't believe this, I, I, I you know, whatever, and are they going to be, die or be injured or whatever because of this? I mean, you need to know when these weather forecasts go out that, you know, this is science, these are technicians that are just giving you, you know, the facts. But now we have, oh my, it's such a mess. Um, and this isn't the first interruption. I mean, this isn't Trump's first thing. As soon as he he came in and uh, these some of these high ranking and maybe I don't know what how far down it goes these people go to meetings and to meet with other people from other departments and agencies and from other countries to you know get together and do whatever they do it's over my head I wouldn't understand it but uh because of Trump's not believing in, you know, global warming and in climate change and all that type of stuff, he canceled. He 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 refused to allow members of the Weather Bureau, whichever NOAA or whatever it is, to go to these seminars where they exchange information, where they ask questions and look at data or whatever. He's done all type, you know, cut the budget so they don't have enough money to go, just doing all types of stuff. So it's not just this. It's basically every day. I'm sorry I rambled on so long. But this, this is serious. This is bad and upsetting. At least it's upsetting to me. I don't know about you. Maybe you're, maybe you're happy with the current situation. I'm not.